What is up, friends? Rob Sabia here, and I'm back with a brand new Spitting Fire podcast interview for all of you today. And I'm with my man, Mr. Joshua Sinners. Joshua, you say what's up to everyone just real quickly. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm so excited for Joshua to be on the podcast today. I know he's going to spit some serious fire, and this is a first ever for us. Joshua was actually on baby duty with his new baby. So uh, he's going to bring the baby on with us in the podcast. We're going to talk about lead magnets. We're going to talk about leadership and, and, and pretty much everything else in between. But before we dive into that, I want to make you all aware. Once again, I do this every time on the podcast. I want to remind you why we do these. We interview leaders in different spaces because we have found that there is a common thread that no matter what arena, no matter what space you're in, that those that are achieving success do certain things, have certain habits and routines and principles in place that allow them to get there. But more importantly, what I want to remind you just real quickly or remind you about is that I believe there's a divine creator who put a leader in all of you. And I pray that something that Joshua and I talk about today will divinely inspire you to start living on purpose, to start betting on yourself in 2022. So Joshua, I know you're on baby duty, man. What was the baby's name? Yep. Uh, it's Chloe. Chloe. Yep. Well, we're glad to have you and Chloe on the podcast. This Thank you. What I love about entrepreneurs, man. We just get to see the real side of what really happens behind the scene. And Joshua, before we just dive into what they call here in Mississippi, the meat and taters of this interview. Okay. <laughs> um, can you give us a 30,000 foot view of your story? Maybe some of the past Yeah. transition time up to what you are doing today. Yeah. I'll try to keep it brief. Um, so really, so I joined the army in, in the 2005. Um, and I, I honestly, I joined, you know, besides wanting to serve my country, but I, I knew I, I was an entrepreneur. I just didn't know what my thing was. And I'm like, you know what, if, if I'm going to do this, I need to have a really strong mindset. So I actually joined the military. Um, remember going to MEPS. And the first thing that came out of my mouth after I passed my test, he was like, what job do you want to do? I'm like, infantry, special forces, like whatever. He's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, are you sure? You might want to go check with your parents. So anyway, I'm like, no, I'm sure. That's what I want to do. So they didn't have any like Green Beret stuff or Ranger stuff. So I chose an infantryman. Um, <laughs> sorry, man. All right. Hey, hey, hey. You're older now, so I, I, I miss right? those days, but there are some days I don't miss those days. Yep. So um, basically, I, I graduated basic, did the infantry thing, went through the training pipeline, got to my unit. And there's there's a reason why I'm bringing up the military is because when I got to Iraq, like I, I, I kind of forgot about my dreams and like went all in on to doing the, the army thing, but we got to Iraq and at the last minute our mission changed and we went to like one of the most desolate areas in Iraq where there had been no US forces and it was a bad place. There's a lot of bad people and uh, it was scary. So we get to our, our, our FOB and I, I just remember this so vividly. We were on roof guard and uh, my platoon sergeant ran up and he was like, hey, get ready. We're like, what? Like, get ready for what? He's like, Intel says we have like 300 AQI heading to our position right now. Air support is like black because of the sandstorm. And like it, I, so that point, it really hit me that like, I could, I could die. And it, it was actually a blessing in disguise because I remember after he said that, I was like, is this really what I want to do? Like, am I going to be satisfied with life if and it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to serve my country. But anyway, it, it really opened my eyes back up to like what I wanted in life. And I'm like, you know, what? if I make it out of this place, I'm going to actually make something of myself. Don't know what that thing is, but I'm going to I'm going to at least try the rest of my life to figure out what what it is that I'm supposed to do and at least try to build, build an empire. And funny enough, um. That was 2007. I didn't have my, and I was always chasing a $10,000 a month just because it was hard for a, a business owner. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't have been until 2019, almost 2020 until I hit that number. And it was because kind of that I'm going to die trying mentality, not to be in a morbid way, but that that's what allowed me to finally do that. I, I was able to 
thrive in chaos when stuff didn't work, essentially. So that's that's kind of like how I came back to being an entrepreneur yeah. from that one moment. So give us some figures today, though. You you broke through your first ten thousand dollar month. What are you doing today, and what kind of numbers? yeah whatever you feel yeah. Like? Yeah, I, yeah, no, no worries. I, I totally uh, left out a, a lot there. So uh, I, I heard about um, um, starting a marketing agency. I used to sell insurance um, and I thought that would maybe be my first business. And I just, I wasn't passionate about it enough. Um, and I, I, what I realized is I love psychology. I always liked it in school. I, I, I actually failed at a high school, got my GED. Um, and I just, if I wasn't interested, I wouldn't do it. But I, I love psychology. And that's why I wanted to join the military because the mindset was just so fascinating to me. So I, <clears throat> I ended up uh, getting into marketing and I'm like, I really, really like this. This, this is really cool. The ability to, um, in a positive way, impact somebody enough to get them to opt into a form fascinated me. And so I heard about the marketing agency with Facebook ads in 2017. And I realized as I was on my appointment to go sell insurance, this is my thing. I called my wife up. And I think the course at the time was like a 297 course. And I was so scared to spend the money. And uh, I ended up getting it. And I would spend the next two and a half years chasing that dream. Um, and then so finally, I hit it in 2019. Six months later, um, we were doing about $100,000 a month. I partnered with a competitor of mine that were, was both in the space. And then after doing that and trying different um, avenues, even after covid um, people were asking, asking me, well, how do you do what you do? How do you get, you know, all these crazy results? I started coaching and consulting. Um, and so now basically I teach people how to build lead magnets, but we went uh, 10,000 a month to six figure months. COVID took its toll, went back down to 10K a month and then rebuilt back up to seven figures or a six figure month, basically. And there's so much in that intro that, that I want to unpack, but I want to respect your time because I know you got the baby. No, no worries. But let me ask this, because I always like to go back to the past, because I think a lot of people, and I do believe you can't let the, the mess of yesterday keep you from the mission today. Yep. I mean, you can't let your past keep you from the present and the future. But I think that our past is a good teacher. Yep. If, if, we, if we remember it and meditate on it in a healthy way, from the military... What was the greatest maybe leadership principle habit that you took from the military that has contributed to you having these six figure months today in your marketing agency? The, the only thing that, and it's not in, in terms of leadership, probably how you, how you think, but it's like dedication to the mission. Um, we do not fail. Like you, you just, you don't fail. Like you figure it out. Um, and I mean, you may not hit the time frame that you wanted to, it may not be the exact metrics, but just not failing and not giving up. And um, I had a lot of experience. Thankfully, we had to do some um, some crazy stuff and quite quite amazing at times what they asked of us to accomplish. And I just always put one foot forward. And that was the main thing. I was able to always put one foot forward. I was able to thrive in chaos. And no matter what, how bad the conditions were, it, you know, not being able to let yourself get phased by that is realistically what's going to allow you to grow sure sure and because i'm i like to be practical on these podcasts because i interview leaders like your, yourself successful entrepreneurs one practical strategy tip habit what yeah. someone can put into practice like starting today because there may be people watching this that go well you know i, I want to do that How, what can i put in place to begin to help me get towards my dream, yeah towards my dream to not give up yeah, it's interesting. So I, I mean, I, I do go against what a, a lot of people say. And I mean, I still wouldn't classify myself as an as an expert, but outside looking in, people would be like, oh my gosh, you made it. Um, so number one, when it comes to a business, like a lot of people say, Oh, you just gotta pick a niche. Like, and I say, no, you don't just have to pick a niche, you gotta do something you love because because I was able to do something I love, I was able to continue doing it for two and a half years. Well, I made little to no money and, you know, I had, I had family and I get where they're coming from, but they were questioning, oh, hey, are you, you're not really providing for your family and, and you got to be able to weather those storms, um, which is something the Bible teaches about a lot, um, have faith. So you, you got to pick something you love and something that, that you care about so you don't quit. Um, and then the next thing is going to be a little bit counterproductive. 
but don't be afraid to fail. Um, it's only because of my failures that have gotten me to where I am today. When I started my marketing agency, I started out in several other niches and it was because my di desire and curiosity to learn how things work that got me to you know, basically make six figures in a month, um, let alone a $10,000 a month. So don't be afraid to fail. Uh, your failure, failures are your stepping stones to success. And that's what's gonna allow you to succeed essentially is, is your failures because they're going to guide you onto roads that you didn't know were possible. And you probably don't even understand what that means by now, but I'm telling you, just keep trying and don't worry about failing because it's going to get you closer to that end thing. Yeah. I love what you said there. And if you're watching this today and this, this episode will drop in the next few weeks, I just want to remind you, if you're watching this, no matter what arena you're in, no one gets a get out of jail free card for failure. None of us are immune to problems, to chaos, to adversity, to giants, to use a biblical term there, right? None of us are immune to that. But the good news is, is if we view them with the right perspective, it can actually grow us. It can actually mature us. We can repurpose it in such a way that gives us fuel towards our dreams, not keep us from those dreams. And I love what you're talking about about here. So let me ask you this, because $10,000 a month online, I did internet marketing in a former life. And of course, I'm in the insurance industry now. And I love internet marketing. I was so fascinated with it. would stay up till yep. 3 a.m. in the morning, seven days a week, trying to figure this thing out. I didn't have as much success as you're having, but what was the biggest breakthrough to get to the $10,000 a month that you had to have? <laughs> and then Part B is what was the biggest breakthrough to go from 10K plus? Can you, can you kind of elaborate? Yeah. On so overanalyzing like the steps and strategies, first of all, like it's the boring stuff that will make you a lot of money. So when I first started, I was in the CrossFit gym space sure. and I would get so caught up being efficient before I was effective. Um, and because I tried to be efficient before I was effective, I lost focus on what the important principle is. So like, number one, what's your offer? You got to make sure you have a good offer for your audience. And then if you can't pay money to run ads, to get a client, you need to go do the grunt work and go find them. And I, I personally don't like cold calling. Um, I, I, I did it. I did cold email. Um, I think there's an easier way to do it now. <clears throat> that I, is, is exactly what I talk about, but um, don't try to be effective before being efficient and make sure that and it, it's kind of like, you have to have a really, really good offer. So whatever you're doing, go look at a competitor and say, Hey, what can I take from that without copying them? But what can I learn? And then go out there and go find your customers and do that grunt work. If you have the money to spend ads, go run that offer um, but don't try to be a, uh, efficient without being effective first, because I would go research every course. I would go try every strategy. Oh, this strategy didn't work. Well, of course it didn't work because the offer that I was using was not good. I need to make sure my offer worked really well first. And had I done that, I easily would have hit a $10,000 a month. And then the next thing is internet marketing. I made like one or two funnels and it didn't work. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do a different niche. You got to make like 10 funnels. Like, so go make 10 funnels, go model 10 different things in your niche. I guarantee you, if you go model 10 different things in your niche, and I'm not saying copy them, but model and make it into your own, you're probably going to be pretty successful on the back because it was about my seventh funnel where I was like, I, I, I got this. I could, I could make anything work now pretty much. Yeah, no, I love that because you know this and I mean, you can study any successful person and I'm a, I'm a content junkie, so I consume all kinds of content, yep. I know, read, you know, watching videos, but all of them say model your way to success, right? Don't, don't, don't plagiarize, don't copy them exactly, but go model, go watch and model and emulate what successful people in your arena are doing so I, I definitely love that what kind of mindset does one have to possess or cultivate or adopt in order to keep taking those big risks because you talked about hey you know I had some family members kind of going hey what's going on here you know we don't see nothing coming in you got a family what type of mindset do you have to possess to keep going and taking those big risks um <laughs> yeah that's a good question um 
it was very difficult at times. And I'm not saying it what it wasn't easy, but in almost a delusional way, I like was like, I'm gonna figure this out. Yeah. Like I don't care. I was I was willing to ruin my reputation and risk it all. Um, and I was very close to getting a job like a few times. I mean, here, here's the thing at the end of the day. Here's here's what makes it all easier. I would have got a job and I would have continued trying to figure it out. Um, but what I, what I would do if I were anybody right now, if you don't have the funds or the money or the resources to do this, don't quit your job. Figure it out while you have a job. There's, there's, you know, some people say, oh, burn the boats to take the island. Yeah, you could do that. But I just had a kid quit my job in 2017 to pursue a dream. And thankfully, I had a very supportive wife um, that allowed me to do that. And we walked and made it out on top. But I don't recommend it. Um, so I think the best mindset going into this is keep a job, whatever side hustle you have or whatever it is making you money, do that while you build your dream. No, I, I totally agree. I think, and, and I always believe in, you know, risking it all. And as you yep. know, as an entrepreneur, there's been seasons where we've made a lot of money, seasons yep. where we've lost a lot of money, but it still doesn't detour us from the dream, right? Of working for ourselves and, and having that, that, that time freedom and being able to, provide for our family. So I want to talk about one thing real quickly. You said about having mm -hmm. a supportive spouse. How has that helped you? How does that help put fresh wind in your sails and fuel you to keep? Well, going? yeah, to, to be honest, uh, before I met my wife, like I always had that entrepreneur like mindset. Like I was all, I was always trying to figure out like, how can I make my time work best for me and increase the money in my, not in a, you know, bad way, but like, I, I just want more money. Cause if I have more money, I could help more people. I could help my family. And no, nobody that I was with up till that point knew what that was like. And they all thought it was stupid. And they're like, oh, you did, you know, X amount of years in the military, you should go be a cop or, and I'm like, yeah, I just, I don't want to like do that. Uh, it caps me. So anyway, I met my wife and she actually kind of molded me in a way to the person I am today. Her father was an insurance agent and she knew a thing or two about being an entrepreneur. So I got my license and um, she was very supportive of it. And I do think that if I did not have a spouse that was so supportive of it, I would be second, like second guessing myself to the point where like, well, should I not do this? And that's why I bring up, just keep a job until you get it figured out. Like, and, and still, even when you hit like $10,000 a month, don't quit your job. Like you need to like do triple. Um, you, you pretty much got to burn the candles at both ends, but in the end, it'll be worth it. Sure. No, I, I totally agree. So let's talk a little bit about your specialty real quickly. Lead magnets, right? Creating these attractive lead magnets, these lead magnets that attract that perfect avatar, that perfect client. I have people that are wa watch this podcast in different arenas. A lot of mm -hmm. insurance people because <clears throat> of arena, but you know, different arenas. What's the first step? What if they're saying, I don't, I don't know how to create a compelling offer for, for my yep. niche? What, what would you instruct them to do? So with, with a lead magnet, you, you can use a lead magnet really, um, really for anything. And being in the insurance industry myself, um, I know like a lot of the bigger companies that we might work with, you know, they bring the leads. Um, and a lot of the creatives and whatnot like are the same, but the one power that you have um, being in insurance is the power of you and being different not being the same as every insurance person that, you know, they already became a lead from before. So what I would do is I would model what works, um, find the marketing material, and then add your, your thing to it. Um, like what makes it different? Like you, like put yourself in there and start making educational content um, on Facebook, on YouTube, and have a Facebook group and start posting that stuff with that lead magnet in mind. Hey, do you want to see how, you know, Medicare can, you know, give you X, Y, Z, grab my nine step PDF checklist and start blasting that on social media everywhere and start creating content. Um, that's exactly where I'd start modeling something that already works, putting your touch on it, because at the end of the day, people are going to buy you. They're not going to buy the company. And it's already been proven. Um, there's a, a, a marketing legend, Dan Kennedy, and I'm a huge fan of him and Russell Brunson. Um, they just, I just watched a video on this where he talked about, it is very difficult to scale a company that is faceless. Like it is hard to get people to attract. However, if you put a face to the company, 
it basically builds up a no like and trust factor, which essentially people buy you. So if you put your own spin on it in your own way, modeling something that works, you will find success. It's just a matter of time. Well, I know a guy that both of us follow, Myron Golden. Yep. I, I watched one of his videos one time where it said, listen, no one can hack you. They yep. may your content, they may take this or they may take this, but they cannot hack your unique flavor, right? That, yep. that your creator gave you. So I love that because I think it, it is a, a big hurdle for a lot of people in my industry and, and other sales industries. Right, we we tend just to buy leads and never really take that that um, harder road or that low road less traveled, if you will, to become our own lead generator. And and yep. what is the biggest hurdle that you've seen for in people that you've coached and maybe that you've just you know um, helped that keeps them from really just being all in with that and learning how to create their own lead magnets and begin able being able to generate their own leads. There's something that kind of rises at the top that you go, this really paralyzes people. Yeah. I mean, just the overthinking part, um, analysis, paralysis by analysis is like the main thing, which is why I talk about lead magnets because lead magnets are like the entry level thing that most people can understand. Um, and I, I do that because I think it's strategic. I'm not talking it about a video sales letter or some five step opt in funnel with text. Like I'm just talking about the simple first step. So I think people just, consuming too much content and again, trying to be uh, uh, efficient before they are effective is the number number one thing. Um, and when all else fails, find something to model. If you're having a hard time explaining what you do or how you do it, go find a competitor or somebody that you look up to where you got the idea in the first place, start building out from there. And that will help you out tremendously. So what are the top three things that you believe a compelling lead magnet or a sexy lead magnet, if you will, has to Yep. Have? Yep. Um, number one, something that is, you know, able to get attention. I kind of teach this the, the act method. So you want it to be something that's going to be able to grab people's attention. So it, whether that's the creative, the picture of it or the hook or headline. Um, so like one of, one of them that I use, and it's pretty general, it's for businesses, authors, coaches, cold consultants. Um, one that I have to do is how to make the ultimate lead magnet course is a free course that I offer. And um, it literally says how to make the ultimate lead magnet. It has a computer with a, a PDF that I use that looks pretty much attractive. So it has the headline and it's, it's attractive. The next thing is clarity. Like it actually gives clarity to people and then it shows them the transformation. And I call this the act method, no pun intended, but a uh, attention, clarity, clarity equals confidence, and then transformation. And they basically see this inside of the creative before even entering the marketing because they see the hook, they see the headline, they see what they're getting, gives them clarity. And they're like, oh, okay, this is what it's supposed to look like. And if you could master that, you're going to be successful when it comes to getting leads. Sure. And so your advice is if you don't know what to do, then find someone in your particular arena or niche that is doing that. But what if somebody is not is not doing that in their specific arena? I mean, it'd be hard to imagine that they're. Yeah. Somebody, but let's just let's just play the devil's advocate for a minute and say there wasn't. Is this something where people can reach out to people like you and you can help them formulate that? Yeah, most definitely. Um, that's also it, it's a good thing and could also be a bad thing. Could mean that it's a blue ocean. Also, could mean that it's a bad idea. Um, I actually found this uh, in a niche my wife is in. Um, and that's why I was talking about everybody, like your failures and all that stuff. It was because of our failures. My wife ended up onto a product. And then after I was watching her with the product and watching the people and I'm like, these people are really missing a lot of what my niche offers. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we need to build this. So because of that, you know, we, we found this thing. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just look at somebody that is closest to your niche and and try that is what i would do okay yeah and i keep hearing a a recurring uh statement a recurring theme here throughout our podcast of modeling 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 find someone who's doing this and i think this is a word for someone today because yep you're that person that's letting these uh as my friend cody askin says all the details delay you 
right? You're, you're overanalyzing, you're overthinking it. And, and I, I believe you preach or preaching this too, Joshua, is I, I preach taking massive and perfect action. A lot of yep. times the first initial action that we take is imperfect. We're, we're yep. getting better at it. We're learning. Yeah, no, it's, it's crazy guys. Like here's, here's a walkthrough of like how I got to where I got, I was looking at a marketing campaign and I was trying to get the marketing campaign to do something really specific. And I own a marketing agency and we, we get in my other business, we get people to actually prepay for a brick and mortar location, which we basically turned a, a local brick and mortar location agency into an e-com and it, it's very difficult to do. So even myself, I get hung up at times. So I'm trying to figure out this funnel to redo and get people to do a certain thing. And as I'm going through it, modeling this thing, I'm like, this funnel is really confusing. And if I'm being confused, why would I model this thing? But I'm like, it's from a really good company. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, and it's this question. How can I make this more simple? That's all I, how can I make this more simple? Well, I'm like, I don't feel prepared. I don't feel like I have all the answers, but I'm going to try this anyway. And so I made a simple marketing funnel without everything the other one had. I added my lead magnet that I felt unprepared to do. And not only did I wake up to like 25 leads at the lowest cost that I've ever had, it also was like one of the lowest costs in the industries because I did the research before I launched. They were Everybody talked, oh, if you get $15 a lead or $22 a lead to your group, that's really good. I woke up, I get been doing this nine months now, and I get leads for like $3.50. So you 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 just got to try. You're, you're never going to feel like the time is right. You're never going to feel prepared, and you're going to be uncomfortable. So get uncomfortable being uncomfortable and just do the work. And I promise you, you're going to feel and learn something from the action you took. Yeah, no, I think that's a powerful message right there. And this is for someone watching this today. Get comfortable being uncomfortable because any entrepreneur that has had success, at least at a high level, will tell you that it's just part of the journey, right? It's yep. just part of it, that we learn how to fail forward, that I would rather live my life looking back going, at least I gave it a shot and bet on myself and, and bet on my dream. Right. You know, Ready, never taking those opportunities. And it sounds like that's what you're preaching today. So let me let me transition back into leadership just for a second. This is a leadership podcast. What is one leadership principle or trait that you've learned, you, you've cultivated in your life, and that you lead others from? Is there one that rises to the top? Yep. Um, you most definitely have to like don't don't like you have to do the thing, like lead lead by example, lead from the front. Um, like when I was training our first employee, I like showed them how to do everything. Um, and then I gave them access to everything. There's not one thing, like I just implemented a, 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 a check-in system for our team because we, we work virtually and I'm not above it. Like I tell them, if I don't do it, you call me out. Like I'm, that's how important it is. Um, so always lead by example in, if you're teaching something, do the thing like with them first. And it you'll notice that they're going to respect you more for it. doesn't mean you have to do it forever, but if you do it with them, like it, you're, you're going to go a lot further. Sure. I, I think you build that respect more with your people, right? That you're willing yep. to the trenches, at least for a season, um, to, to model that and to show that. So I love that leading by example leading from the front. I know off camera and through Facebook, you know, we've talked about uh, conferences and events. You've been to a lot of conferences or several conferences and events. Why is it important that people invest in those? Because there's so many people, even in my space, that are scared to buy a ticket to a certain event. But what I have learned in my life, or I've seen it in my own life, that just one or two nuggets that I took away from that event changed my whole business. Can you talk about that just a little bit? Yeah. I mean, you're, so besides networking, um, you're just, these events, typically they're going to give away the farm in terms of knowledge and you're going to learn things that are, are going to be, that allow you. And then I would say the biggest thing isn't even necessarily the knowledge, but like, you're, you're not alone. You're with other people that are doing it. So like when I saw the insurance, what I loved about the insurance industry is it was a huge community. 
Um, and it was because I saw everybody else being able to do the thing that I knew it was possible on a large scale community. So it, it's almost like a transfer of success when everybody groups together that gives you a feeling of hope, basically. So let me ask you this, and, and if not, that's fine, but was there one event or conference retreat that, that you think of in your mind that go, this was really a defining moment, like a, a paradigm shift happened? Is there one that you can think of? Um, well, an event, I mean, I was coached by Myron Golden the last 12 months, um, and I was the person that made the least amount of money in the room. Um, but basically by being in the room with people that were more successful than me, especially Myron Golden, um, I was able to see the imperfect action that other people take that made so much money. And it basically made me believe, oh my gosh, this is possible. Like everything I'm trying to do is possible. Like the, I would, I would know more about product or services than a lot of the people in that room would. Like I would know, they, they would ask me, be like, dude, whoa. They'd be like, how do you do this? How do you do? I'm like, wow. Okay. All right. I got to dream bigger. I got to think bigger. Yeah, no, I, I definitely love that. That when you're in that community of people, that transference of success, that's what I feel like. Sometimes when I feel like life is just taking the wind out of my sails, yeah. these events, when I go to these retreats, these conferences, you, you see people and you go, and, and you hate to be this way, but we, we've all done it. You're like, man, if that guy can do it or that girl can do it or that couple can do it, surely our, I can. It's that transference of belief, of success, the way you put it. I ask everybody that comes this, on the podcast this, Joshua, if there was one word you would use to describe yourself, what would that one word be? Um, resilient. How has being resilient contributed to the success you've had today? It's allowed me to be successful just because, you know, you don't give up when times get hard. That's it. And, and as we get ready to close shop today here, just a couple of more questions. Um, one is, what if there's somebody watching this today in any space? Let, let's just talk from an entrepreneur to entrepreneur here. What is some advice that you would give someone who says, you know, I, I want to take the risk, but you know how those butts get in the way, right? But yeah. this or this or that, just speak to them right now and, and give them some words of advice that maybe would compel them to, to take that risk. Well, yeah, if, if, if you're, well, should I take, the, what, what are you risking? Like if, if you're, if you're trying to get out of the nine to five job, we'll do the math. How much you got saved up for retirement? Uh, are you willing to work? for an hourly wage for the rest of your life and, and a boss? Or would it be worth trying to run or create some type of a business that you would actually love? Like, I don't work. Like, I mean, I work, but I don't work. So like, <laughs> I, I, I help some people for free sometimes. Like, I, I love what I do and it's not like work. So you're, you're gonna get more energy. So I would ask yourself, is it really worth it, you know, I, the way I see the risk is I see it a bigger risk doing something that you don't like versus doing something that you love. And to me, that's the risk. And it's a no brainer for me, because I'm telling you, if you, you figure it out, I, I can make a million dollars in the next 12 months launching a new product. And I could retire if I wanted to right then and there. Cause they say what you need a million dollars to basically retire. Like I could, I don't want to wait till I'm 65 to do that. That doesn't sound fun. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And we were talking about uh, you had gotten your Ed Milet book in and my wife and I actually just posted about Ed Milet's book on our story because we're going to see him next month at a conference. And I love what he says, right? The, it's the power of one more. It's that yep. one more funnel or that one more text message or that one more email or that one more phone call, that one more relationship that could break you out of yep. that J-O-B. Yep. Right? That, could, that could put you on a, a really fast stream to your to your goals. And so I definitely love what you're saying there. Is there a book though that you've read? Because I know leaders are readers and I talk to a lot of successful people that read or listen to books. Is there a book <laughs> that really just changed you or you, you fed off of that really gave you fuel to chase those dreams? 
Yeah, it's actually uh, the guy's name is Steve Sims. It's actually called blue fishing. Um, and I, there were, I, I, I can't just say it's just that book, but that book did help me tremendously. Um, he just like kind of told the story of his life and the amazing, like th this guy was the guy that could connect you to anybody. He could get anything done. You want to go on stage and sing with journey. He's your guy. Do you want to go to Sir Elton John's like yearly party? You want to get on the red carpet? Like this guy was your guy. And so he, he basically just, he came from like a bricklayer family and he's like, I don't want to do this. And just kind of talked about his journey. And anyway, the long story short is again, he showed me things were possible and he did amazing things which expire, inspired me and literally, and I'll say the other, the other thing, <clears throat> I, I, mean, I don't know if you have another question, but something I forgot I meant to say earlier is there was a time in my life in 2017 where I didn't hit my $10,000 a month. I got so sick and tired of being in the same position. I was like, I'm just going to choose to do it. And I don't know what it is about that. But I chose to do it. And I literally told one of my friends, I'm like 45 days, I'm hitting that 10K month, hell or high water, it's coming. I told him that. And sure enough, 45 days, it happened. So the other thing is like, make the decision to make the change and make it happen. Like make the choice. There's you know, no other way. And I think that's a great point because I see that in my own life. I didn't journal for years. If I'm gonna be honest with you, I thought, man, I don't wanna journal, that's stupid. But when I begin to write things down in my daily thoughts, even from watching content, reading the Bible, reading different books, I would just get my most creative self is from like <clears throat> morning to like 10 a.m. Yep. And I started studying successful people and they were all journaling. They were all making notes. They were all writing down their intentions and their, their vision and their goals. And it was interesting that once you got to that $10,000 month, yes, it was hard. Yeah. But it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be, right? But then even then, once you make that $10,000 a month, and I'd love to see if you've seen this in your own life, you kind of go, I know the blueprint now to making 10 k Yep. Have you seen that in your own life? Oh, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah. And then even that, you learn how to make 12 k Then you learn how to make 15 k Yep. Then you learn how to make 20 k right? And it just, it, it's interesting to me that when you make a decision, Right. Not some half hearted commitment, not some, well, I may, but when you say no matter what, this is what I'm going to do. This is the deadline. It's interesting how it begins to manifest in your life. And I, and I believe that's what you're talking about and what you've seen in your own life to go from 10 K months to six figure months. And there's people watching this today, Joshua, that go, there's no freaking way that's happening. And can I just be honest with you? That's what's keeping you from making 10,000 plus. Yep. Yeah. You know? Be belief is actually the biggest thing. And it happens at every level. Like uh, your goals are like a rainbow. The moment you get close to them, you realize like you're already on to the next goal. It's already moved. And my big thing is like we in our agency, we do about 100,000 a month. But now what we want to do is we want to get to a million a month, which is a crazy huge jump. Um, but we know like it's possible and we're like, why would we try to go for anything else? Let's just like, let's just go for this. Um, and it, it's all about belief. And we, and if you could do the math and backwards plan your way there and believe it, which is what we did and show that it's possible, you can do it. So just, if you're starting at that 10,000 a month goal, you know, that's only a certain amount of, of products you got to sell. It's a, if it's a thousand dollar product, you only got to sell 10. If it's $500 product, you only got to sell 20, sell 20. Um, if it's a $3,000 product, you basically sell three. Yeah. And one of my friends helped me break it down this way in our space is really two to three applications a day really make you meet this particular goal. Yep. Every day when I come in, you know, when I'm talking, whether I'm working from home, working from my car, if I'm mobile or, or wherever, you know, my goal is to hit that. I know that I need to make X amount of calls, right? And I don't love yep. calling either. Dials, contacts. Yep. I have to make a call, certain amount of relationships, show, show up at people's house, whatever, certain amount of seminars. I know that all that's necessary to meet that goal. And really, if you break it down and make it that simple, it's a lot more believable and a lot more achievable when you take it, you know, that old, that old truism of how do you eat an elephant, you know, one, one right. bite at a time. 
And I think that's often overlooked and discounted. Where can we find you? This, this has been a great interview. I know we've just done a 30,000 foot view of, of really what you do, but I'm, I'm gonna put your links in the description and that way if people wanna reach out to you and learn more about lead magnets, they can or go get your free course. But where's the best place to find you online? Yeah, the best place right now, you can go to the Facebook group, search Ready, Launch, Scale, um, how to grow and, grow and scale your product. Um, and then the other thing is a website will be done in the next few days. This is joshuafcenters.com. Okay. So, so the Facebook group or the website that will be yep. live here in, in a few days. Listen, as, as we close today, anything else that you go, man, I really just wanted to say this. I really feel like I need to share this with, 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 with the audience before we get off today. Yeah, just, uh, you know, like I said, at the end of the day, um, your actions are basically determined by your beliefs. And if you don't believe that you can hit whatever goal right now, you need to spend all your time figuring out how you are going to be able to believe that you're going to be able to hit your goal. And it does take a while. Um, but if you could just focus on that, uh, your life is going to change drastically. Because if I were to go back and talk to my 27 year old self, when I got out of the military, I would be absolutely shocked in a positive way where I, if you were to tell me, dude, you're going to make like a million dollars in the next like 10 years, like, oh my gosh, like I would just be thrilled. Like I would be so pumped up. So figure out how to get that belief around that goal and your life is going to change. Sure. No, listen, man, I appreciate you coming on today. And as we close today, I just want to piggyback off what Joshua just said. Many of us don't invest in ourselves. And I believe that belief starts with becoming more. Learn how to become something more. Don't be content and, and happy with where you're at now. Joshua was saying this, that that old Joshua when he was in the military was not the person that he was then was not enough to match the goals that he has today. We all have to grow. We all have to get better. My last year version of me is not good enough for this year version. Yeah. People like Joshua and others that we interview will tell you that you've got to continually invest in yourself. And I know it sounds cliche. I know it sounds like a broken record, but many of us don't do it. We invest in everything else except for ourselves. And maybe today, this is a word that you need to hear to start investing in yourself and start learning yeah. from people like Joshua and others and start emulating and modeling what they're doing and put it into whatever arena that you put it into. Well, before we get off today, I want to remind you guys to please like, comment, subscribe, share this with someone today who needs to hear this message. Thank you guys for tuning in. I pray that something that we said keeps fueling you, deeply inspires you, I said in the beginning, to go after those God-sized dreams that I believe the Creator has put in your heart. God bless you guys. Make it an awesome day, and we'll talk to you soon.